So as you, um, as you may or may not know, I originally started as a magician. Last month, if you were here and you saw my adult magic show came in a case like this. Don't take this through the airport, by the way. We're going to talk about my mistake there in just a minute. Um, and when I started in financial services, I, gra I went from magic to financial services, and I got my Series 7 and my Series 63, 66. They were different exams than they are now. Um, I came back from training in St. Louis, and I sat down my first day, 9 a.m., and my branch manager says, I got you a book where all your clients are going to come from your entire career. He said, this is awesome. I'm young. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to go get a Ferrari. It's going to be great. And he handed me the phone book. It was a lot bigger back then. But this showed up in my mail yesterday, so I had to take a picture of it because I see that after decades, since Al Gore claimed he invented the internet, we noticed that the Yellow Pages has changed their tagline. It says the real Yellow Page is the original search engine. So I wanted to give the big dumb marketers at the Yellow Pages a little bit of props because 20 years later, they finally caught up. So my branch manager said, here you go, Ty. And I also wanted to give a shout out. The back cover is now a pest control company. Normally, if you ever look at the phone book you get every once in a while, the back cover is either Matar or Salino and Barnes. Yeah. So either they gave up and realized finally it doesn't work anymore, and the pest control company was able to afford it, or this company is killing a lot of bugs. <laughs> so, I, so anyway, so I was given uh, the phone book and said, go make 300 cold calls a day. <laughs> You'll talk to 60 people. 15 of them will let you send you information. Five of them will agree to meet with you as a rookie financial advisor. Three of them will actually show up for their meeting, and because you're a rookie, you'll close one. So if you make 300 calls a day, you'll get one client a day. You do that long, you survive long enough. And don't shoot yourself out of frustration, boredom, and pain of getting hung up on. You will have a career. And I said, geez, Al Gore is claiming he had, no, this was way before, this was pre-internet. So I couldn't say the internet's been around. Isn't there a better way? And I dialed for dollars all day long because I didn't know any better. My magic business on the side led me to discovering Dan Kennedy, who's the highest paid marketing coach consultant on the planet, which radically transformed my career. And then started the marketing company that you're all here for that started 12 years ago. So the very first marketing strategy that I learned, and if you're going to take notes, now would be a time to start, unless you were writing down someone you wanted to meet, was the concept of, it's going to seem simple to you, but humor me, lead generation. You have to fish where the fish are with the right bait. I know nothing about real fishing, but I'm guessing if I was going for bass, an Oreo cookie on the end of my fishing pole probably wouldn't catch anything. You have to, okay, somebody says no, okay. So you have to go where the fish are, and you have to fish with bait that is attractive to them. So the very first bait I ever created after I started working with Dan, so I'm going back in time and showing you the very, 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 very beginning, because over the last couple months people keep asking. So this is the very first lead generation ad I ever wrote. It's the first one. They get better. This was the first one, which said, annuity owners often lose money to unnecessary hidden fees, will you? Some annuity owners with substantial value on their annuities did a high unnecessary hidden fees. It's true. Get our custom annuity review. Eliminate the hidden fees. It could save you tens of thousands. Review is free. Shows you ways to get more benefits from your existing assets and help preserve your annuity values. Yes, you can take pictures of my slides if you want to. Um, and I took the 800 number out so that you wouldn't call it, because it goes somewhere else now, because this is like 15 years ago. So I was offering a free analysis of their annuity. If you're financial services, you know what that means. And we were going to what is called 1035 them, switch them tax-free to a new annuity where they would have lower fees and I'd get paid a commission. So this was the first ad I ran to get annuity owners to call me and say, I want a second opinion. Make sense? OK. Now, the first place I ran this, um, I ran this, anybody ever read Forever Young? It's like the paper for older folks that's put out by the Buffalo Spree that's printed on newsprint and it isn't gorgeous like the Spree is. So that was the first place I ran it because it was way cheaper than the Buffalo News and I could reach better, in my hopeful opinion, a better quality of people. Now, that wasn't, this is the version that ran. The version I designed that Forever Young would not let me run had what we call copy doodles on them. These are cosmetic things designed to enhance your readership. So I put a giant red circle around the headline. I put an arrow and I put underlines. This is also the second version of this because now it says affluent families often make these seven mistakes when working with their financial advisors are you. I upgrade it. And Western New York's only truly comprehensive multifamily wealth management office reveals 
I made up the title so we could be the only one. That is a marketing strategy. I made up a title for what we did as opposed to saying I'm a financial advisor, I'm an investment representative, I'm a stockbroker, so that I could say I was the only one. How to overcome the seven biggest mistakes Effluent make when working with a financial advisor. If you have over 275,000 to invest, you can't afford to be without this free report. Only five copies left, first come, first serve. Now, notice I had a pre-qualifier. If you have over 275,000 to invest, I didn't want someone with a $4,000 IRA to bother calling me. I had to print, get the reports printed and mail them and send them in a box like this, which is also called a shock and awe box, which we'll talk about maybe later. And I had a heck of a time with my wonderful compliance department because I said only five copies are left. This is originally what's known in the marketing world as false scarcity, where we make something up saying it doesn't exist so that people want it more. Fellas, you can relate to this. I've never had more women ask me out or hit on me than when there was a ring on my finger. <laughs> Literally, I, six months ago, nothing. I get married, all of a sudden, I'm like, where were you? I mean, I love my wife, but where were you two years ago? Like, come on. Apparently, this is a magnet. So is not having enough. So I had to go to my compliance department, sh throw out. I told them I threw out all the other copies of the report, take a picture and say, look, I've only got five. I can advertise this. And I'll run out and print more if people request them. It's a virtue of working in financial services. We're highly regulated by people who like to prevent sales from happening. All right, so that was ad number two. It worked so well, I will tell you, um, it started generating 30 responses a month. So literally a lead every single day. Someone calling in who qualified going, I want that. So I said, I'm making some money now. And I went from a qu tiny quarter page ad, this is a little bit bigger than a business card. And I fought with, uh, we also, we upgraded when we went from to the 275 minimum, I moved from Forever Young to the Buffalo Spree. More money, supposedly. Now, the problem I ran into is if anybody here ever read the Buffalo Spree, quick show of hands. It's gorgeous, right? This is god awful ugly. I went back and forth five times with my ad rep and she's, we won't run it. It doesn't match the look and feel of the magazine. What's this inverse white on black type? Like, we won't do that. It doesn't match our branding. And then I had in something that is not a duplicatable situation. The late Larry Levitt, the owner of the Buffalo Spree, happened to be my cousin. So I called cousin Larry and I said, my ad rep says I can't run this. Can you tell her to run it? And he looked at it and he said, you know it's, yes, I know, I've heard before. You don't think it'll work. If it doesn't work in one month, I'll cancel it and run a pretty ad. And he said, no, no, it takes like six months before any ads work, right? They got to see it like six or seven times. It's once a month. I said, no, it'll work the first time or I'll kill it. And he said, okay. So I ran it. We got 30 responses. And I said, see, here's my 30 responses. And he said, holy something. So I graduated to a full page, which drove them more nuts because it looked like this. That is a very old picture. That was before kids, before I was a lot younger. Um, so this was a giant full page ad with, again, highlights, bold, different colors, a I'm so convinced it's important for you to be aware of the mistakes your advisor's making right now with your wealth that could cost you millions. I'm willing to pay you to read this. That's another marketing concept. I guaranteed what I was doing. Now you all know what a satisfaction money back guarantee is. I did it on the free report. If you read the rest of the ad, I had said, if you don't, um, in the report it said, if you don't like the report, I'll donate 100 bucks to your favorite charity in your name, which is a big risk. And then I had to prove to my sales prevention department that I could afford how many circulation is the Buffalo Spree have? How many people could see it? How many people are going to request it? How many people might ask for a refund on the report? And I said, and they're like, well, it has a circulation of 100,000. You can't afford that. And I said, you do understand how marketing works. 100,000 people aren't going to respond. So we had to go back and forth till I put up a bond and guarantee, and no one ever asked for a refund but I had to prove it. Okay, so that's where I started, and we're gonna get to how we apply all those lessons now in the 21st century, but I wanted to share with you real quick some lessons I learned from my attempt at performing a magic show for adults instead of little kids from last month. Because you're different than, I've been performing professionally for little kids for 32 years, and normally my sweet spot is like six to 10 years of age. They're still cute and innocent, mostly. So lesson number one, everything great happens outside your comfort zone. So I'm going to tell you stuff today that you're going to feel uncomfortable about. You're not going to want to do. That's why you should do it, because it'll work. 
Number two, you need to practice for what can go wrong. So my kid show that I've done hundreds and hundreds of times I can do in my sleep, I almost have, and I know every single thing that can go wrong, and I've practiced for what to do if that happens. That was the first time I had performed an adult show in 32 years. It was brand new magic. I did practice a lot before I came here, but I did not figure out everything that could go wrong. And there was stuff that went wrong that I had to improvise and cover up for, and hopefully nobody really noticed that much. Michael says he didn't see anything. I love you. Awesome. You're here all week. I thought it was a great show. Thank you. No, it was a great, I wasn't denigrating myself. I thought I did a good job too. It's better that you said it. Um, <laughs> but I did, there were some mistakes. So one other thing I learned is adrenaline amps up your physical reactions. This may not matter in a financial advisor's office unless you're so excited about the million dollar ticket you're about to write that you drop the pen or something. But it affects it, it affected me. Because I was more, I'm not nervous for the kids shows because I've done them a couple hundred times. I was nervous, that's why we did the show first and your introductions later because I wanted to get it over with. I said, if I'm gonna screw this up, I want them to leave with all the content and forget about the magic show. Um, number, so this is something I thought was really fascinating to me. What you think is impressive is not the same thing as what other people think is impressive. So I texted every single person who attended last month whose number I had, and I said, what'd you think? What was your favorite magic trick? I honestly cared more last month about that opinion than I did about what you thought of the marketing. And everyone responded, and the response was almost unanimous. And it would never, it was never, I never even thought that that would be the one. And I said, I'm so jaded because I've been doing it for 33 years. We're all jaded because we've been doing whatever we've been doing a long time unless you started a month ago. So we speak in jargon of our industry. We assume people know things they don't. I've learned because my wife has forcibly advised me several times that I need to translate marketing speak into English, which is why we gave you what a marketing funnel was. Because I had a presentation a couple weeks ago for a company that was doing $5 million a year, so I assumed a level of online sophistication that wasn't there. Because I started mapping out a customer value journey and all this cool stuff, and they went back to the beginning and said, wait, what's an opt-in page? And some of you don't know what that is, and that's okay. That's where you, it's called a squeeze page. You drive somebody there and they have a choice to either raise their hand and say, yes, I want what's on there or no, I'm going away. It's a forced decision. I, you're either calling for my report or you're not. If you're not, I don't care about you. Make sense? Awesome. Okay. Um, I should improve my handwriting. So several of the effects that if you were here, you saw involved me predicting the future of what was going to happen. However, I wrote all of those predictions myself and my handwriting is worse than all of your dentists and all of your chiropractors. So that means when someone was up here reading the big reveal, it was not as dramatically impactful if they were stuttering and going, hang on, wait, what does this say? <laughs> as it would have been had I printed and they would have been easily smoother. So I've learned I'm gonna work on my handwriting in the future. Um, education goes better with entertainment. There's a reason why Jay-Z or Beyonce is paid a heck of a lot more money than the best public school teacher. We value, as a society, like it or hate it, we value entertainment more than education. So you have to edutain people. I just made that up. So we're going to edutain you today, hence why I took the marketing concepts from Lady Gaga presentation, made one, as opposed to just telling you some marketing concept. I wrapped it around Lady Gaga because she's arguably a lot more entertaining than I am, judging by her bank account. Oh, so don't take this through TSA. Um, they've changed TSA, I don't know if you know this, so I tried to explain to the TSA, I fly TSA pre because I speak at marketing conferences a lot, and I fly a lot, and I tried to explain to the lady that my magic and shock and awe stuff was in here. And she said, looks like something that they would carry the bomb codes in. And I said, there's, I said, I can't even say anything to that because you can't say the word bomb in an airport in any way, shape, or form. So I said, that's not, and she said, well, I'm gonna need you, um, they have this thing now, this, I got one, they're TSA bags, right? And she said, I'm gonna need you to take your watch off and put it in the bag. And I said, well, I'm TSA pre. And she said, do you wanna talk about it in the detention center? Or do you wanna put your watch in the bag? And I said, I'll put my watch in the bag. And so I said, you know, I'm a magician and there's, there, there's magic in here. Um, and she said, 
you sound like you're a comedian too. Do you want to be funny in the detention center? And I said, no. And she said, do you have a phone? I said, yes, I have a phone. She said, put the phone in the bag. I said, all right, put the phone in the bag. And then she says, do you have any money in your wallet? And I said, well, I do. Why? And she said, do you have a $20 bill? And I said, I do. Why? And she said, well, there's this new trend in counterfeiting where apparently they're doing these like metal nano microfibers to try and match the pattern of the bill. So we've got to detect it. And I, I said, aren't these supposed to go in the little like doggy bowl you make us put our stuff in? And she said, oh, so you think you're a comedy magician now? And I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, here you go. So I gave her this stuff and I walked through security and I kept going. And I grabbed my box and I just kept going. And all of a sudden, I start hearing there's all this hubbub, sir, sir, and she's walking, and they're yelling, and she's got like five guys around her, and they're all staring. <laughs> they're staring because the watch is back on my wrist. They're staring because the phone is back in my pocket. And they're staring because the money's back in my wallet. And I said, that's why you don't mess with a magician. entertainment. All right, so on my trip, these are some things I noticed. This was an alternative health shot drinking place. Like they put all kinds of whatever in it and you get a health shot, like a one ounce shot, and it costs more than tequila. But they had a thing saying Bitcoin ATM inside, which I had to take a picture of because I don't understand how I'm going to pay $10 for a shot with a Bitcoin. And I did not see anyone use the Bitcoin ATM. But Max said, can't we go get Bitcoins, Daddy? I'm like, uh, you want to spend your college fund on Bitcoins? They're a little pricey right now. Um, I thought, I just did this because this is funny. This is Fred's Sichuan Chinese restaurant. I know I'm being slightly unpolitically correct, <laughs> but I don't know that I would trust Fred to take <laughs> Ing's Chinese restaurant, maybe. But I told you the jokes wouldn't get better. I did get to take Rebecca to Jamba Juice. Um, I didn't know there's actually Jamba Juice in Buffalo, and I hadn't been to one in about 20 years in California, so we got to go have Jamba Juice. All right, so Lady Gaga. Okay, so some inside baseball. She went to Fordham for musical theater. I went to Syracuse University for musical theater. Um, when at Fordham, she ran into difficulties that launched her career because her theater professors told her when she sang, her voice sounded too pop-y, too pop music. So then when she sang pop music, they told her her voice sounded too musical theatery. So she's like, what am I supposed to do? So she decided to find a way to bridge the gap between the two because she was very frustrated with the musical theater staff at Fordham. So she decided she wanted to be famous, so she actually studied how to be famous. This is a really good book called The Andy Warhol Diaries. She studied both Andy Warhol and Madonna to figure out how she was going to get noticed because there's millions of got girls singing in New York clubs who all want to be famous. So she figured out who her target market was, who was underserved in the music business. And if you read, I bought on the plane after seeing the movie, I then bought a number of biographies of her on my Kindle to do research for this. So she found out that the biggest underserved market, in her opinion, in the music industry was the underdog, You'll see more about them in a minute, and if you don't already know, and she made them her tribe. She said, I'm only writing songs for them. They are going to be my people. They are the outcasts. I feel like an outcast. I'm going to make them my people. So you need, who is your tribe? Who are the people who you want to hang out with? Um, so again, Lady Gaga, born this way, also happens to be LGBT, which is a large percentage of her original listener base. And she did that cover on purpose to appeal to her target market. If you were a conservative, redneck Republican who loves Jack Fox, Foxworthy, you weren't buying that album with that cover on it. Sorry, Jeff, if you're watching. She made up her own language, which is really, really important to do. Your jargon, not your industry jargon, something they only hear from you. She called herself Mother Monster and called her tribe her little monsters. And she did an album of the same name. So she called out to who she wanted, and she made them feel like they belonged. We're going to talk about 
how you do that in your business. Um, she came up with the craziest outfits since Madonna on purpose to get noticed. And then, as she got more and more successful, has gone more and more conservative and more and more mainstream. That was her then, this is her now. Now she looks like the girl next door, not so much. <laughs> this one you say, don't go, don't go over there. If she comes outside, go hide in the house. This one you're like, oh, you could bring her home. Um, she put her issues into the movie. Um, so for example, she's had lifelong issues where she hates her nose. She won't get a nose job, but she hates her nose because then she would feel like a sellout. So her character in the movie had lines that she has been quoted as saying about how much she doesn't like her nose and how she was told she wasn't pretty enough. Although she doesn't, apparently, she may still psychologically have that issue, but judging by the celebrity she's dated, they don't care so much. So the five principles that we use, that she used, are, and if you don't know these by heart because you've been here a while, you should write them down, in order of importance, who is your target market? Yes, you can take a picture. Who is your target market? That will affect 50% of the success or failure of any marketing you do. Get it right, you can print money. Get it wrong, you're going to be cold calling. Um, who is your target market? Where do they hang out? They might be on Facebook. They might be on LinkedIn. They might be direct mail still. I'm going to show you, I want to show you a really cool direct, some really cool direct mail examples because it's working better than ever because nobody's doing it. Okay, so who are they? Where do they hang out? What do you do that's different? I can get bookkeeping anywhere. Why is yours different? You don't have, you're not, I'm not actually asking you to answer, but I, rhetorically. So you can create branded products and services for your niche. Uh, my original niche in financial services was estate planning attorneys who were partners in their law firm. There are about 300 in Buffalo. You can buy the list um, and go after them. And I did, and I created, I took commonly used vehicles in financial services like non-qualified deferred comp and other jargon I won't tell you that the financial advisor people will get, and I rebranded them for attorneys. So they raised their hand, answered my lead gen ad, and said, I've never heard of that before. My advisor didn't tell me that. What else isn't they tell aren't they telling me? And it got me in the door. Who, where, what, why should they do business with you? Magical selling proposition, MSP, which is the answer to the question, why should I do business with you as opposed to anyone else who does what you do? Including doing nothing. Because, for example, for Jen, fitmomsfitness.com, cheap plug, um, for Jen, She's a personal trainer. So doing nothing is her competition. She has to get our fat, lazy butts off the couch to work out or eat right. So she not only has to say, I'm better than Fitness 19 and I'm better than those six other personal trainers that you didn't hire, but I'm better than sitting on the couch. Some of you, you have to disturb them enough to get them to take action. The, the, the complacent mind does not move. Does that make sense? So who, what, where, why, and how? Lady Gaga, okay. So let's go into concepts. Again, we're still on marketing strategy. We're gonna to get to tactics from Funnel Hacking Live. So how you go from zero to 100 million in revenue in three years, in three words, is hook, story, offer. What is the hook that's gonna get them to pay attention to you? What is the story you're gonna tell them about who you are and what you do? And then ultimately, what is the offer you're gonna make them that's gonna get them to take action? So if your marketing isn't working the way you want, as well as you would like, there's something wrong with one of those three things. Your hook is wrong if you're not getting enough leads. Your story's wrong if they're not taking the next step to learn more about you, whether that's a consultation or whatever it is. Your offer's wrong if they're not buying. I'm sorry, my wife Rebecca says I shouldn't say wrong. Your offer could use improvement if they are not buying. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna give you a formula to help you brainstorm all of these things, because people like acronyms, they're easier to remember, consumption. So the formula is going to be SCAMPER, S-C-A-M-P-E-R. S stands for substitute. You can improve your hook, your story, or your offer by substituting, taking something that's working somewhere else and using it in your business. That is what we ethically call swipe and deploy or steal and deploy. You cannot copyright infringe, you can't wholesale take the photo of my slide and go use it as marketing, 
but you can be inspired by it and do something somewhat similar. So um, my, we had a couple, uh, who was the person, uh, Mary Kay, Christina offered the pampering at the office, which is really smart, and then she said, I could come to a lunch and learn, right? That was you? Now, that concept of lunch and learn at work wasn't invented by Mary Kay. Primarily, she's not you. Mary Kay stole, if, you, if that was your idea by yourself, you stole it. If it wasn't, your company stole, swiped it from the drug rep industry and the dental rep industry, which are absolutely famous slash notorious for doing lunch and learns. I'll buy you guys lunch if you'll sit down and listen to my sales pitch. We're not brilliant innovators as financial advisors. We stole it to do dinner seminars. We upped it. You're buying lunch, I'll buy them dinner. And then we went from you're buying them lunch, you're buying them dinner, I'll take them to Ruth's Chris. And it was who could spend the most money to get people there for the free food. Substitute, the C stands for combined. Combining an offer, combining from other places. So, home inspector trying to get to real estate agents. I've got inside baseball on this one because we used to do work for a home inspector who was trying to get to real estate agents who flaked out on me because his wife said you can't work two jobs because he had another full-time job. Awesome. Well, no, I mean, you should, marriage is good, but I like the f not flaking out on me part. All right. So we combined elements from other industries because everything is always somewhere else. The expert's always from out of town, right? You would have paid more to be here if I had flown in from Los Angeles. It's just the way of human nature. So we combined elements from other industries that hadn't been applied in home inspection before, and all of a sudden people responded. Adapt. Again, we keep what is called a giant swipe file that started out in our office. Anytime I see good marketing, I save it. My wife knows she's not allowed to throw out any junk mail at home because there's million dollar ideas every single day. Now, I will show you an example. If you watch my Facebook Live show every Wednesday morning where we have open office hours, you can see me critique, show off Facebook ads, YouTube ads, LinkedIn ads, direct mail, all kinds of cool stuff. I'm going to share with you some direct mail that is absolutely brilliant. So this, if you think, if you are struggling in your business, if you're not making the money that you want to make, this will smack you upside the head and open your mind. This is a church. This is a church that has no location. They send out letters, people send them money. That's it. Send us money, we'll pray for you. There's no way to check if anybody's actually praying. But they're doing tens of millions of dollars a year all via direct mail, no Facebook page, no website. Yes. So this is their envelope. God's Holy Spirit instructed us to loan you this to start turning things around for you. So, start, so here it is, use it and be blessed. Now, some, I could teach three days on what they did. We don't have that kind of time. But not only did they print on the front of the envelope, they printed all over the back. It's free real estate, people. Use it to get the letter open. Your biggest hurdle is get, first is getting them to open it. I'm not going to read you every quote. Inside, you get, we have first sales letter. Notice it's full color. It's got highlights, red, doodles, blue, everything all over the place. Looks totally unprofessional. My father, who originally was the editor of the Buffalo News, would cringe. Then it's got all of this. God's, now this is called an involvement device. God's help has come to your door. This is a holy, blessed, powerful, prosperous, biblical handkerchief. This is the handkerchief. It's a piece of paper. Now, you have to follow the steps, and you have to say the blessing over the handkerchief, sleep with it under your pillow overnight, <laughs> and then mail it back by sunrise the next day, along with the list of what you prayed for, and then it will be activated. You also get, yeah, seriously, there's a list of what you can pray for. I'm loaning you this in Jesus' holy name. Um, you can pray for a specific amount of money, your children, a better job, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then they send you the seeds of success, which is the biblical harvest plan. Every month, you have to tear this out and send it in with money. Tear out and put God first to remind you every month to give them money. 
tens of millions of dollars. I give them money just to stay on their list because we get stuff that we use from this every month. They're brilliant. Yes, I'm a Jew. I'm going to burn in hell that I'm giving them money. But I'm printing it because I'm following what they're doing and I'm going, oh my God, that's ingenious. You could. I'll meet them. They're going to be in hell with me. That's a good point. I did not plan that. That was perfect. All right, M. Modify, minify, or magnify. You can change what they're doing. You can make it smaller. You can make it bigger. So I test marketing all the time to see what smart marketers are doing. This is a shock and awe envelope. So Swiss America sells precious metals, buy gold and silver coins. I call, I request the information online, whatever. It shows up at my door. I get an envelope. I was expecting this, the War Against Economic Freedom Free Report, which is Nicely done, very long. I thought nobody reads anymore. But also, I got The Secret War. I also got Protecting Your Wealth. I also got The Key to Financial Freedom. I got a letter. I got FAQs about putting gold and silver in your IRA. And I got a client referral sheet saying I could refer people right away. Haven't bought anything from them. That is brilliant. They're asking for referrals before I've done business with them. People fill this out. Because there's a bribe, you'll get a free silver American Eagle coin. So that's a shock and awe. And, and their business cards are really cool because they embossed the gold coin. It's not gold. You can't steal it. But. So I was expecting one thing. Shock and awe is when you show up with a whole bunch of other stuff. They're shocked. I didn't expect all this. They're awed. Oh my god, I can't believe you did this. The bigger the package, size doesn't matter, ladies. The bigger the package, the more awe you create. So this box pulls way better than this. This is all going to fall apart. OK. All right, P, put to other uses. Who else can use this? E, eliminate. Can you get rid of something and make it work better? Are you doing too much? Are you, telling, are you talking too much? Do you need to go see Bill Kenoki about how to listen when you sell so that people will actually sell themselves for you? When he taught me that concept, it blew my mind. I said, oh my god, I'm supposed to be talking the smallest amount in the sales meeting? I thought I was, t I was trained, you talk nonstop until they buy. Bill said, shut the up, and magically more people bought. He's like, if you listen, they'll tell you what they want. It's a revolutionary concept. And the most cool factor is it works at home. <laughs> when I said you should do a marketing campaign to your wife, that's part of what I was talking about. We did that on the Whiny Palooza Wednesday last night. I hope you saw it. You didn't. So go watch my, my wife's show, Whiny Palooza Wednesdays on Facebook Live. Go watch it last night. It was all about what you and I were talking about. Okay. We did it for you. She was tired and said, I don't want to do the show. I said, we're doing the show. You should spell out Whiny Palooza. W-H-I-N-Y-P-A-L-U-Z-A. Thank you. If you go on Facebook and just type in Whiny Palooza, you'll find it. Um, scamper, E, eliminate, R, rearrange, reverse, or redefine. We found we've had incredible results changing the order of the way we offer things. If we tell you the bonuses you're going to get by buying before we tell you what you're going to buy, people will buy for the bonus, and they don't even care about the actual thing we were trying to sell them in the first place. OK. Um, this is a cool, shoot, I skipped to tactics. So this is just something cool that I learned because it was at Funnel Hacking Live. So there are over 100,000 ClickFunnel users building marketing funnels for themselves and their business, or they're marketers and they're building them for clients. So you can spy on all their work. So if you type site colon clickfunnels.com and then your keyword, you can see all of the sites built on ClickFunnels for that keyword. So I did this for Tom because I typed in insurance. And oh look, there's hundreds and hundreds, of, you can't see it on this page because those are all Google ads. But there's hundreds and hundreds of insurance click funnels you could go see and say, ooh, I like that element. Let's add that. You could type in that financial advisor. Ooh, somebody else is already doing it. All I have to do is copy them and modify and scamper them. I don't have to start from scratch. Does that make sense? Awesome. Um, you can also, once you, you can also type in site and their website, and it'll show you all of their pages. So if you go to a marketing funnel that you found, if they're smart, the home page is a squeeze page. You have to opt in for something. So you can only see it unless you opt in and go through their process. But if you do this, it will show you all of their pages and you don't have to opt in to spy on them. 
you should opt in to spy on them to find out what they're doing. But if they say, hey, you got to give me 100 bucks to get to the next step in my process, you can use this to find out what they're doing for free. Does that make sense? So go ethically spy. OK, another thing we talked about a lot was positioning. How to position your offer so you are irresistible to your prospects, patients, clients, what have you. So this is Angelina Jolie. This, I'm going to use her example because they did. So this is Angelina Jolie on the front cover of Esquire being labeled the sexiest woman alive. You may disagree, but that's OK. This is a marketing class, not sex object <laughs> class. Um, so here she is on the cover of People, 100 Most Beautiful People. Now, imagine if Angelina Jolie took an internet marketing class and wrote a sales letter to try and get a date. She breaks up with Brad Pitt, and she decides she wants to get a date. So she buys a list of multimillionaires, because Angelina's high maintenance and costs a lot of money to maintain her 27 adopted kids or whatever she's got now. And I just imagine, what would the sales letter from Angelina be? Dear Peckerheads, which one of you losers wants to buy me gifts Take me around the world on luxurious adventures and cater to my every whim. You need to let me know in the next 12 seconds or forget about it. Angelina. <laughs> if she were an internet marketer and she had the right, now people would, million, they would reply because she's got the right positioning, right? If I did that, it wouldn't have the same effect. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. So these are three, multi, three questions to help you understand your target market better. What keeps them up at night? What transformation do they want to experience by buying what you've got? What's the before and after that my data wrangler friend talked about? And finish this sentence for your prospect. If I could just dot, 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 fill in the blank. What, would, what do they want? If I could just get a regular flow of clients in the door. If I could just get more referrals from those stupid functional doctors who don't know how fabulous I am. If I could just sell more, whatever. So that's how our doc would fill that out, if I could just get more referrals from functional medicine. How would her prospects fill that out? How would your patients fill that out? If I could just feel better, if I could just play with my grandkids, bend over without, whatever, without it hurting, whatever. OK, so this was a phenomenally transformational exercise. Where are we? 130. OK, that I'm going to have you go through. We're going to do a shortened version in the interest of time. But you're going to write a letter from your prospect to yourself. Think, telling, expressing their fears, expressing all their doubts and worries and insecurities, and thanking you for solving them all. You're going to actually go write. You're still looking at me. Go write. <laughs> so you're writing a letter from your prospect. Dear Jen, thank God I found you. But I was so worried I would never be able to get, out of sh get in shape again. The five kids did, I thought did me in. I put on 10 pounds with every kid. I couldn't get off the couch. I'm sorry, I'm writing it for you. But <laughs> you get the idea, right? I'll give you three or four minutes. No, you can't type it on your phone. Look at that. Ask and you shall receive. It says so in this letter. <laughs> Jesus will provide the pen. I haven't donated to them yet. You haven't donated to them yet. They're going to send you a pen in advance. I'm going to steal a quote from Mary Kay while you're writing because she said the two things people want more than money and sex are recognition and fame. If you can make them feel recognized, heard, understood, appreciated, you will own their wallet. So this letter is an exercise in understanding how well do you know your target market? If really well, awesome. If not, you got some studying to do. You can interview them. This is a really valuable skill, really valuable tip. You can interview your target market, interview your existing clients. Ask them, what were you worried about before you met me? Why did you hire me? How do you think it's going? Interview happy clients, by the way. Don't make that mistake. I did that. It's a different exercise if you interview the pissed off people. Letter to yourself. Yes, the letter's coming from your prospect to you. Dear Bill, before you, I couldn't shut up as a salesperson. I felt like a sleazeball who had to take a shower every day after work because I was ripping off my customers. Or not. 
now the Jesus halo is over me and I get letters in the mail from St. Andrew's Church every month. If you are done, you can look up so that I know that you're done. Okay, your tear is done. Awesome. I have the same questions. Awesome. Yay, 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 yay. All right, we'll do two more minutes. Okay, almost everybody. All right. So, what'd you learn from that? Anybody get anything out of it? This is the part where you tell me you're still awake. For me. Yes. My, my clients are always concerned about a symptom and almost never properly identify the cause. That probably applies to our doc, too. They come in for the symptom. And they think they just want the symptom to go away. Yep. Awesome. Dale. For me, it was a, a goal that I should strive for. This is what I want my clients. Ooh, that's also really good. I love it. Tara. Um, most people feel insecure about how they look. Have you met Jen? We <laughs> have, actually. Oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that strategy, 